Today I am two weeks out in one day. It's Friday. This is, for the most part, a typical day for me. I just get up first thing and weigh myself. Uh, of course, brush my teeth and put my trunks on and send my pictures, take, take my pictures. I can see my my setup there for how I take pictures when I'm when I'm by myself is got my like ironing board and I have like a, a cup um, measuring from the from the kitchen just to prop my phone up and you know I I've made all kinds of crazy stuff to make sure I can get get good pictures but I'll, I'll take my pictures every morning so at this point with Matt and this started last week sending pictures daily and I'll, I send them and we'll see exactly what we want to do for the day and make sure I'm on track and progressing. And even before that, I think if, if five weeks out, we're sending weights daily because weight is such a focus for this show. So I'll send that to him and I'll get the plan. Um, one, one thing we did do this week, and I mean, you saw me see me there with my CPAP is adjusting my CPAP because I, I was talked about having some digestive issues last week and a lot of it was actually I didn't go into this I had everyone sending me these, their recommendations for how I could fix my digestive issues and <clears throat> we didn't have the, quite the whole story I with my CPAP at night um, as I've lost weight the pressure on it's been too high so I'll start have I'll start swallowing air at night and I get these bad gas bubbles and which is gas pains and it lasts like 2 p.m. in the afternoon so yesterday I went I had them to actually turn down my pressure I got a new mask that seals a lot better too and it worked great and I have like I have zero gas pains today <clears throat> which makes eating so much better it makes my waist feel so much smaller posing's easier because I'm not trying to suck in against these these gas pains so that's been a, a good positive for this past week. Um, also added a little bit of fiber in as well too. It's like five grams of chia seed and uh, flax seed and a pea husk protein. Um, pea, it's a flax seed, a chia seed, and a, uh, a pea fiber. And so I finally feel like digestion is, is normal normal as it's going to be for this point but I uh, I'm getting up a little earlier than I usually do I have a client early so I have all my meals packed ahead I have all my pills packed so I could just get up and come straight to the gym and I've, I've had a, I have a hard time saying no to clients uh, I just I like to work and I I like the challenge of feeling like I'm doing more work than I can while I'm on prep. It's I've always done well with more adversity. Um, every prep, there's always some type of challenge or you know, working two jobs or whatever you're going through. But it's those challenges makes me feel like I, I'm really overcoming things. And when I can, uh, it gives me the ability to say outwork people, and that's how I feel. But. I do regret taking some early morning clients though. I'm not, to be honest, it's, it throws off my sleep sk schedule and it, it's not as consistent for weight wise. So these, this next, from here on out, I'm not doing any more early morning clients, but uh, I, I would talk to Matt. So the good thing with Matt is like we, we communicate really well and he doesn't just send me a plan and I just have to do it. We, we work around things. So uh, out to, do my cardio before this client, I would have to get up at five in the morning and then rush down a meal and get right to training them. But instead, I'm just, I woke up later at 6.45. I'm just coming fasted, I'm gonna train them, and then I'm just gonna do my cardio after. So it actually allowed me to get my, my full sleep and get a more consistent weight. So this morning I was 217.8, which was a, a new low. And last week I was, you know, stuck around 222 
So we made some, you know, 4.2 pound changes, and that's uh, that's been in just four days. So it's been some significant change. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I, I haven't had to f train someone fast. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's, I, I don't have a huge appetite when I first wake up in the morning, but we'll uh, we'll train this client and then get on to my fasted cardio. So for for me during the day, like I I just I just coach and train. That's that is my full time job. So I have I have a lot of online clients that I work with, and then I have some people that I train in person. I, I've never wanted to be one to just stay in the gym all day. But I do enjoy it. I enjoy training people one-on-one. -on -one. It doesn't feel like work to me. But I'll, I'll limit myself to like, on prep, it's been five clients max per day. And that's that's really pushing it with doing, when you have to do cardio twice and your weight training. And I, this, like I said, this last week, I'm gonna really, really cut back to maybe just two or three a day. But main thing is just doing, doing online coaching, which is great for prep. I have so much flexibility in my eating, uh, making my own schedule, which is a luxury that I haven't had in the past. You know, I know you see these pro bodybuilders, you think, oh man, they they haven't made. They can have like the perfect preps. And at some point, you know, we were amateurs too, and I was working full time at a hospital. I was online coaching on the side. <clears throat> and trying to trying to squeeze everything into my schedule it seems impossible but as you progress you're able to to kind of build yourself around your bodybuilding career so since Monday we increased cardio. I was doing 45 morning, 35, 30 p.m. on a level five, so met up to, to a level eight, which the intensity is so much greater. Monday was extremely hard, uh, just for, just to get through every moment of it. It's such an internal battle. As these days have gone by, though, it's been getting a little bit more used to it. I won't lean on the machine. If you lean on the machine, you can see your heart rate drop like 10 beats per minute. <clears throat> you might as well have it a few levels down. So I keep the towel and hold it the whole time to stay upright. But still, every bit of it challenges me the last 10 minutes or just wonder how, how am I gonna get through each minute. But I do it and it's, uh, it's in that those moments when I'm thinking that that's how I'm beating someone else. They're not willing to keep pushing or drop drop a level down. And that motivation, it comes internally. You know, people ask me what motivates me and there's not really an external factor. There's some, but down to it, it's, it's internal. It's something in me that, uh, that I take great gratification out of knowing my when my hard work is rewarded and that satisfaction is is everything um, it's not doing it for someone else it's not for social media it's uh, not for my coach it all comes from from inside and what that does for me because I love this um, I love the struggle I, th I thrive in it so I have people encourage me and I thank y'all thank you for all the support that y'all do give me and the push but no, deep down, like I, I don't need a push from anyone else because the true push comes from within me to keep going. I like my oatmeal, how I like my competition. So this is meal one, so I get done with cardio, get straight to eat my favorite meal of the day. It's 40 grams of oats, 50 grams, I use animal whey, I use a scoop of red velvet and a scoop of brownie batter, and it is 
it is delicious. It's like dessert. And then I have uh, my five grams of fiber that I add into it. And I make it start off pretty thin, but I'll, I'll, it'll thicken up a lot. So it stays, stays pretty filling, this meal. <clears throat> Still for the diet this whole week, it's been um, 350 grams of, uh, I'm sorry, we actually, we made a change on Tuesday. So we lowered protein 50 grams, lowered to 300 grams, or I removed a protein shake and added in back in 50 grams of carbohydrates. So I'm, now I'm at uh, uh, 110 grams of carbs, 300 grams of protein, and around uh, 25 grams of fat. So the thought process on dropping bag protein and adding in carbohydrates was um, obviously with where I'm at and having a hard time dropping weight, the protein intake that I'm at easily maintains my body weight. So lowering protein is not going to have a big impact on ma maintaining muscle. Uh, if anything, we can partition those, that new, those calories towards carbohydrate, which will fuel performance more. Lowering protein will also help stimulate appetite more because protein is very, um, has a lot of, it's a high satiety food. Then if I'm able to fuel performance and, and train harder, then also just carbohydrate itself will be protein sparing in a sense because once your protein's so high and your carbs are so low, you're using those amino acids to make glucose. So you're just an expensive form of carbohydrate. So you give the body this easy form of carbohydrate, sometimes it'll be a, a little uh, easier to let go of body fat that way. And what I've noticed this week is my, my appetite's increased you know, and digestion's better for it too, just not having so much so much protein. And I'm, I feel like my training performance is still really good too. Going into these training sessions over my entire prep, the approach has always been the same. I've always had my logbook, so I always have a goal in mind. It's, it's always very focused, whether for the weight or the reps I'm going to be using and executions never sacrifice. So, you know, I, I like having almost like this checklist on prep of, you know, I need to do cardio at, at this duration and this amount of time. And for my vo training volume, I need to do this many sets and hit this weight and hit this rep. So I have goals to hit on everything. All these things are within my control and just having, having my logbook, I know if I'm progressing or not, and it'd be easy to, if I, if I wasn't logging my information, just to, you know, back off some. So it's be, being two weeks out, just walking, just loading weights, it's all exhausting. It, it's so taxing. Uh, you feel every bit of calorie expenditure that you're having to do extra. So you walk into the gym and just feeling that tired that you're like, there's, there's no way I can hit these weights again. My strength has to be dropping and you can't let that be put in your head. Cause if you, if you believe that mentally, that's what will become reality. And, you know, sure enough, I, you know, I'm still able to match my weights. And sometimes I have little drops on certain exercises or certain sets, but overall in the big picture, like I, I am able to, maintain those weights and because I have them run down so I know what I have to do and I have those goals every set it's like all right you know I, I know exactly what I need to do to achieve it and that's what's going to be the stimulus that's holds muscle and so I can fight like hell just for that set and you know like so without having it written down I wouldn't know what that that goal would be and feeling that mental and physical fatigue it'd be easy to back off and not push for that extra rep and you go weeks on in on prep doing that and shortening your reps and sure enough by the end you're, you're gonna have significant weight changes in the loads you're using and uh, decreases in reps and that's gonna lead to very likely you know um, tissue loss and I've had people ask me like, how, how can you do such low volume? And people don't realize that it, you can do such a low amount of volume to maintain 
muscle mass. Um, it shows the research. If you maintain training intensity, the, the weights, the reps that you're using, you could use a third the volume, the training volume. So, you know, I've gotten down to like my leg training now is, is like eight work sets to failure. They're all out sets. I mean, um, it's a hard workout. And, and I know you see the other guys doing more volume, but they're usually counting their warm up sets into that volume, like five sets of 10. Those are build up sets to one all out set. So I'm just counting my, my work sets. But I eventually on prep just get down to the bare, bare basics. Just, you know, um, if I hit two hard sets and I know that third set's going to be a drop off in strength, then I just I won't go into it. So that's been the whole approach and um, just decreasing volume. But overall, my whole training for the reps I use has rep ranges and has stayed the same. So as I move into my final weeks, there will be some some slight changes. You know, you start having to weigh out the risk for the versus the benefit of certain exercises and doing as much cardio as I am now with recovery starting to dwindle some, you know, you have, you have to weigh out. Do you, do you want to do this, this squat all out? Like, is it going to be beneficial at this point? Or, um, do I risk, have the risk of, of injuring myself? You know, that's, that might be the time when you do start weighing those things out. And the, the last week of, of training, I, I do typically back down just slightly, but, um, you know, I'll uh, I'll get into that on on the next video when I'm I'm showing you my uh, my final week. Hey, buddy! I want you to do a burger and fry meal tonight for your last meal. Um, you've had a really really good week. And basically at this point what I want to see is I want to give you some type of refeed where we're going to be able to not see a huge jump on the scale. So we're going to get more calories in, not a ton of glycogen, um, you know, so I think it's going to be more controlled. Plus, um, we know from previous preps that you do respond to that denser fat, um, you know, sodium type meal. So I want to just make sure with your weight where it's at right now we get a good response you know going into these last two weeks because we might very well do it again next week we might very well do you know do it again the weekend of the show so i just want to get it intact now see how you do um and then we'll go from there but overall um i'm very very happy with the changes this week i also think it's you know it's, it's a cool thing and then i'll be the first to say it you presented a change to me that um has definitely worked all right so that's that's the plan from matt so we'll carry that out just have a burger place in mind that I might go to later on and we'll uh, just use that as my last meal and implement it and see what see what kind of changes happen from there. So typically on prep, I Matt hasn't typically done a lot of cheat meals. We've done some sushi in the past. It's usually been a good go-to just because it's fish, rice, it digests really well. So we stayed away from you know foreign foods like burgers just because we can't really use them to refeed the whole time and you know a lot of times they're you're looking for that increase in glycogen and so you have more performance out of it with using a high fat meal you don't get that glycogen increase however in my situation you know Matt like Matt he was saying for a high fat meal it's something calorie dense you typically will burn whatever nutrient that you do consume so if you eat a lot of fats you're going to keep burning fat so that's a good point for right now um, also won't be terribly high in carbohydrates so we're not gonna have this huge weight increase like if, if I went and ate like you know, four or five sushi rolls but uh, still the idea is to not go you know over the top get one burger fry and, and end it there well the burger went down and Feel pretty full from it, so the only thing about like increasing weight tomorrow possibly is just from just like a heavier set meal. Um, but it's you know a meal that like I, I'm not overly full. It's definitely more than my normal food volume, but uh, I do feel definitely like warmer and you know feel a little hotter. So possibly like give me a good metabolic boost. Um, we'll just see what happens with the, the next day and see if the next following days after that my weight starts dropping even more so having the burger last night 
It was like about an hour and a half or so after, and it, it was kind of impressive because I was walking up the stairs to the apartment and already like the f deep fatigue that was in my legs has already started to, to dissipate. Uh, it did sit really heavy on my stomach, just so I'm not used to eating that food volume, so sleep suffered because of it. I was kind of uncomfortable actually, and didn't get the best sleep. I did wake up at like 3.30 and looked really full. Um, everything was separated really hard. I was really vascular. The only thing I did notice is like my hands were kind of swollen. It's just from the sodium amount. <clears throat> it didn't look like it was, it was a detrimental effect, but I know like my weight was going to be up the next day from it. And also just trying to go back to bed, like heart rate was elevated. I was warmer. Just it was just a large meal, so that, that thermic effect of food was pretty high. Um, Getting up today, I was 220.8. So I actually, I gained three pounds, which was kind of expected. I have, it's a lot of, a lot of food and also a lot of sodium. I only peed like once last time when, when usually I, I go three times. So definitely there's some water retention and that harder look that I had when I woke up at 3.30, it had, had kind of dropped off. Um, despite the sleep being kind of poor, I did feel like my, my legs did get some really good recovery, which is good because um, we're going back to, to pushing cardio hard again. So I kind of anticipate, you know, after like everything runs through me digestion wise, I get water intake back up today. We should start seeing some more drops for the rest of the week. So plan is to go back to my base plan diet, which I have posted below and get back to doing cardio AM and PM. And we will check in in one week and see what the outcome is.